guest today is Josh Holmes. Josh, how are you? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing great, although I'm a little tired from Code Mash. I understand Code Mash is an awesome event, but I tend to be a little more abusive on my body and senses here <laughs> than I am at a lot of conferences because there's so many awesome people that I just don't want it to end. Yeah. So you end up staying up way too late <laughs> and you end up getting up way Guilty. too early. <laughs> Guilty. Well, and then not pummeling yourself part. with uh, with way too much uh, caffeine uh, just to stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's an awesome conference. I, I really I enjoy it. Agreed. Uh, let's talk about nitrogen. That's your that's your baby now. That's your Absolutely. Pet thing. Well, uh, uh, when you say my baby, let me be careful. Be be very uh, uh, specific here. Uh, it's Tim Park's baby. Okay. Uh, so Tim Park um, is is on my team. He's um, uh, one of the principal developers on the team. Uh, he founded a, a project called Nitrogen, which is an Internet of Things uh, framework. Mm -hmm. Um, really designed and aimed at the home automation uh, space, but it works in a number of different places where we have devices that are talking to services, receiving command and control back and that kind of stuff, but kind of tuned for home automation. Um, that's been Tim's passion for a long time. Um, and there, but there's now a, a core team of four or five of us that are uh, working on it pretty heavily. Okay, and well, what does it do? So, um, so we're working with a number of different startups that are doing home automation and other types of devices. Mm -hmm. um, they have amazing ideas on their device. Um, and typically they have firmware de level developers or you know embedded developers of some sort. Right. Um, and then they care about, well, I can send telemetry data up, store that somewhere, and I can act on it and I can send, you know, get receive commands from the cloud. But I need to do so in a secure way. I need to do so in a scalable way. Mm -hmm. um, my users need to be able to log in and see just their devices and, and be able to control just their devices. Okay. Um, we need to make sure there's not rogue devices on the system, make sure there's not rogue users on the system, that kind of stuff. Um, pretty much everybody needs almost everything you talked about there. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, and then on the back end, they want to be able to process the data, do data analytics on it, um, and they care about how they do that. All the front end of that stuff, though, they from the device, talking from the device, back to the data stored somewhere, they don't care about that, really. That's all plumbing. They, they care that it happens. They care that it's... They don't um, care how it happens. No. I mean, there, there, there are parameters that they need, like security. Okay. <laughs> you know, and, and, and they need um, speed, you know, they, so sure. they, they, they want to be able to... They want to be able to walk up to their um, uh, light and move up and see it go up and down. They right. want to be able to change a setting and, and, and see it happen, right? right? So there's a there's lag time that they're worried about. Sure. Uh, but security, lag time, um, what was the other one you said? Just a Scalability. Scalability, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, connecting you know your phone to your coffee pot is cute, <laughs> but it doesn't really need a lot of stuff in between. Okay. Connecting to you know a hundred thousand users to a billion devices, that right. requires a little more scale. Sure, that's a that's a lot of coffee pots. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of coffee pots, right? Coffee pots, thermostats, light switches, um, you know, everything else that could be in the home. Um, oh, this is this is the reason that uh, HTTP, uh, I'm a teapot, yeah. return code was invented. Yes. <laughs> just, I just thought of that. <laughs> I always wondered. So. We, um, so that's what nitrogen does. Nitrogen, um, on your device, uh, you know, we, we have a, a couple of different ways you can talk from your device to the nitrogen backend. And one of those is uh, we have a client library uh, written in Node.js. So if you've got a device that can run Node.js, okay. do so, use the client library, it makes things real, real simple. Okay, now you told me that earlier and I was surprised because I always thought of Node.js as a server thing. But right. This, in this case, you'd install Node on the client, or and, yes, uh, or if you may probably already have Node on the client. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So Node Node runs lots of places. I mean, right. a tremendous number of places. Uh, JavaScript is kind of the new x86. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's everywhere. Right, right. <laughs> and it's becoming. Um, I mean, it's always been a flexible language and a dynamic language, but it is becoming an incredibly powerful language. And and a. I mean. I've spent the last kind of ten months just immersed in JavaScript, and mm. it's been absolutely amazing to see. You know, I, I still haven't do. found the edges of what it can't do. I mean, mm. it's, it's just um, 
yeah, I'm, I've been I've been really pleased with it. Anyways, so we've got a native client that runs in in um, Node.js. You can drop that on your device, or so you don't want to use that. You want to use you know you're not running a device that's powerful enough to run Node.js, or uh, you just don't want to use Node.js. Uh, you can talk via a RESTful service, which we've got. You can talk via MQTT, which is I forget what the is it a queue? Yeah, it's it's machine queue telemetry something or something along those lines. I can't remember what it, what the MQTT stands for. Mm. It's, uh, it used to be an I IBM spec. It is now um, with the Oasis Foundation, so it's an open standard. Okay. Um, but long story short, it's a very popular in machine to machine communication, um, very lightweight protocol. Um, uh, so we've got a gateway for MQTT. Uh, we are days from releasing the uh, AMQP uh, gateway as well. Uh, and then we're going to be looking at co-op and uh, OPC. Uh, OPC is Olay for Process Control. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of words in there that I don't like, but mm -hmm. you know, the, the entire industrial automation uh, space uses OPC as okay. its standard. Did you say Olay? You mean like object linking and embedding? Object linking and embedding days from the old like days. Uh, Excel and Word documents? That's exactly the one. All right. Only you can do... Um, you can control big machines inside of factories like conveyor belts and mm. sorting machines and you know <laughs> loaders and and you know all kinds of stuff with Olay. 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 Yeah, Olay. Yeah, Olay. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. However, um, we're working on an Olay gateway, Olay for, um, for process control gateway um, for nitrogen. Mm -hmm. uh, we're uh, so, I'm trying to think. So we support a number of different protocols. Okay. Or you can just run the client library. Uh -huh. That will, you know, talk into nitrogen. Mm -hmm. um, the front door of nitrogen is guarded by a, um, a registry service, and so you have to uh, have your device registered. Um, and what you do is you, you know you get a uh, SSH, SSH style. Uh, handshake right at the beginning we give you a key that key says oh I'm me I'm, I'm who I am um, and I belong to so-and-so right everything within the system is a is a principle so you've got devices applications and users are all principles principles have permissions on each other so you can have uh, a device is able to send messages to another device you users are able to see devices and send messages to them Okay. Um, devices are able to send users messages. Applications are able to see users and see devices and manage messages between them. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. So everything is a principle. Everything is um, has permission sets on each other within the system. Okay. We manage all that for you in yep. Nitrogen. So when you're sending data into uh, Nitrogen, at the front door, we're going to look at it and say, are you allowed to send data into uh, nitrogen at all? Do we know who you are? Mm -hmm. um, if not, we're going to reject it right there. I see. Um, that data comes in over whatever protocol we were talking about earlier, and uh, we push that into Event Hub. Mm -hmm. um, Event Hub uh, allows for massive scale out and ingestion. Um, Event Hub is a, is a, it's a high scale ingestion engine. We're able to do a gigabyte worth of telemetry data in per second. Okay. Does Event Hub the same thing as noti notification hubs? Uh, no. Event Hub and no notification hubs are very different things. Okay. All right. So they both have hub. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, notification hubs. So you see my confusion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So notification hubs are for um, uh, pushing data down. Pushing data down. Okay. Yep. Event Hub is for capturing events. Okay. And so it, it uh, what happens is we push data in the front of Event Hub and on the back of it, think of it like a large buffer. Okay, and we're able to buffer data in, mm -hmm. and we get the data on the on the on the back end, okay. and is guaranteed to be delivered at least once. Okay, and it will scale up the uh, services on the back end to match the incoming data, mm, okay. and and so we're able to do uh, extremely high ingestion. Uh, I've personally pushed Event Hub to uh, 270 uh, megabytes per second. That was about 750 thousand messages a second. Mm. That was a lot. Oh, yeah, you can make a Kessel run in under 12 bar sizes. That's speed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so we, um, uh, on the back end of Event Hub, we pull out and we do, um, we store everything off of MongoDB. 
Um, oh, interesting. But we also have adapters for uh, for table storage, for HD Insight, for you know a lot of different types of storage, uh, blob storage, etc. Okay, all no SQL. Uh, predominantly no SQL. Okay. Um, there is a SQL adapter as well. Mm -hmm. um, we don't use it very often because it's not incredibly scalable. Okay. Um, but I mean, it works. I mean, if you need relational data, then then you can use that. Right. Um, if you don't need relational data, we recommend going with one of the NoSQL options. Okay. Um, let's see. From from there, uh, we also can route the messages inside. So if it's um, the user is sending a message to a device, or a device is sending a message to another device, um, then what we can do is we'll route those messages through. We push them into Service Bus. Which um, and into service bus topics, and the devices and users and everybody on the other end, all the principals are subscribed to their service bus topic. Mm. They get the messages off those topics, and the the great advantage there is that they can be semi connected as well. So some devices are battery powered. We turn them on a couple of times a day. That's great. Other devices are fully connected, and we'll get the messages instantly. Mm -hmm. And okay. we don't care. We're going to push the messages out to the end and let them sit there as long as they need to. Hmm, interesting. Um, so message routing and processing uh, on that level. Uh, and then we've got an app um, model as well where you can install a, a, what's called a Nitrogen app to add additional server-side business logic if you want to. Okay. Uh, so if, you're, if you need something more complicated than simple message routing, you can go right There's there. a hook for doing that. There's a hook for doing that. And then once we have all the data in storage, now your, your data scientists can go to work okay. on that data. And start applying Azure Machine Learning, or can apply, you know, Power BI, or something like that, and start cutting and slicing uh, that data. But the reality is, is that if you just want to kind of get started, you write you write stuff on a device that pushes into the gateway, and we'll make and and, and, and that's all you need, and okay. we'll capture all that telemetry data. You can analyze it later. If you need to do command and control, it's a little bit more work, but not much. Um, to uh, register and subscribe to a set of messages, and then your you know your devices and users can push messages to um, to the device that's listening. Okay, so let me make sure I understand the boundaries of what Nitrogen is doing here. You've got a device that's pushing to a service that's guarded by some gateway mm -hmm. security. It's that that's the boundary of Nitrogen. That gateway where the the data is coming into Nitrogen. Yep. Nitrogen then routes it either to another device. Yep. Or to a data, well, probably always to a database. Always to data, yeah, to and sometimes data. depending sometimes on sometimes to another device. Sometimes to another device, and that's that's the boundaries of nitrogen right there. Yeah. So okay, and the things that you do outside of that, like that, like analyzing the data, that's that's, that's your else. business. Yep. The things you do on the device yourself, your right. data developers, make that that's your business. You're handling the plumbing, which is really common stuff. Yep. And we've got a um, there's a web admin portal where you can, as an end user, uh -huh. can log in and you can see just our kind of a raw list of here are the devices, here are the permissions that those devices have on each other, um, here's the messages that those devices have sent and or received. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but it's very raw. You wouldn't yeah. want to put this in front of an end user. This is more for troubleshooting. It's for troubleshooting, and yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, and it's that. also, it's a good starting point if somebody wants to go build a beautiful portal for their end users. Because huh. yeah. we've got all the data there. Right. Now you just need to format it and make it pretty. Mm -hmm. We didn't do that. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> uh, are, so is um, is the product done? Are you still actively adding features to it or enhancing the features that are there? What's, what's it's constantly under, in? under development. Um, so I mean, we have people who are using it today, um, and I mean, because it is full featured enough that you can use it today. Mm -hmm. um, however, there's a lot of stuff that we're still looking to add. You're adding. Look, what's what's on your feature list? Can you share that? Sure. Um, I mean, it, uh, I mean, we should should have said this at the very beginning. Um, it's open source. Wow. It's MIT license. It's up on GitHub mm -hmm. at uh, github.com slash nitrogenjs. And you can find the homepage at nitrogen.io. So if there's a feature that you want, come pull, put in a uh, request. You know, come, mm -hmm. come, come drop it in as a, as a feature requ uh, request. Or go develop it, and we're looking for lots of people to uh, pitch in and help. Okay. So one of the things that uh, actually something we're working on uh, next week is um, and maybe by the time this airs this will be done mm -hmm. <laughs> is we're working on the group concept um, and so I can group devices into let's say you know I've got a living room I want to send a message to all the devices in the living room or I've got all of the lights in my house 
I don't want to send a, send a message to all of the lights in my house at one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're working on a group concept. So Because right now, if you want to turn off all the lights in the house, you have to iterate over the list right. yourself. And so we're going to add a group concept. Okay. And uh, so that's one small feature that we're going to be adding uh, next week. Um, we're also working on a phone client app called Oxide. Um, and that is a Cordova app. Hmm. Um, that will talk to and be able to control nitrogen devices uh, from anywhere. Okay. But we're also working on all join implement uh, an all join implementation in Oxide. Uh, what all join does is it's device to device communication directly. Um, hmm. So on the home network, if I'm standing in front of my thermostat, there's no reason to go out to the internet and come back in order to turn it on. Hmm. Instead, what we'll do is we'll connect to the thermostat, turn it on, change the temperature, and then we'll let the cloud know hey this happened mm, okay <laughs> but that way we get almost zero lag on the you know what's happening right here and then uh but we still have access to capture that telemet- telemetry data for analysis later all right cool can you share some of the clients that are using it today sure we um been working very heavily with microsoft ventures huh? and so we have a lot of startups that are using it today uh there's one called um uh remo uh, R-E-E-M-O, getremo.com. Um, they are, they have a, uh, it's a wrist, wrist wearable controller. So it goes on your uh, wrist kind of like a Fitbit or a Microsoft Band. One of these, yeah. Um, and you can point at a light and raise your hand, turn it on, huh. swipe down to turn it off. You can point at your um, stereo, turn your hand and it will turn the volume up. You wow. can flick to, to the right and, uh, and flick to the next station, flick to the left, and it'll go to the previous station. Hmm. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's cool. And they're using I wanna, nitrogen. I want to be in a room where two guys have that. Yeah, yeah. And one's a little bit country. Right. And, and a little, 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 little rock, rock and roll. roll and they there. just battle all night long. All night long. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have a company called ISI uh, Technologies that we're working with, um, and they have a product called Heatworks. Um, and what they do is... Uh, it, it's a, it's an instant hot water heater, mm-hmm. and so it's a little bit bigger than like a football. Yeah, my mom <laughs> had one of those in her house. It's 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 not very big. The difference between theirs and traditional instant hot water heaters or a um, boiler hot water heater is that most of the time what they do is they have heating elements that you heat up, and then you pass the water over these, mm-hmm. and they are heating the water up. Um, uh, from you know, basically external, you know, kind of like you're boiling water on your stove. Um, what they do, which is quite different, is that they have uh, graphite rods inside of their uh, water heater, and they pass electric current through the water, and use the minerals and uh, other impurities in the water to heat the water directly. Hmm. And so it is uh, 99% efficient. Interesting. Because wow. all of the electricity that goes into the device um, goes to heating the water, except for the um, bit that checks for temperature and the bit that um, powers the little bitty one by one inch LCD screen. Wow. So it's 99% efficient. Very cool. Um, which, anyways, so they're using nitrogen as their back end. So all those, you, you can control your water heater from your phone from wherever you happen to be in the world. Hmm. Uh, you can check your flow rate. You can turn it up, up you can turn it down. Um, they are looking at different things like uh, if you put this in your shower, um, you know, uh, having different profiles. So, you know, I like the, the temperature very hot. My wife likes it about five or six degrees colder than I do. Um, you know, so we should be able to have instant forever on hot water um, unlimited amounts of hot water at the temperature that we care about. Hmm. Okay. And they're able to do that all, you know, from the phone. Very cool. Yeah. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? <laughs> There's a ton of things. So we've got customers using nitrogen today. You can get nitrogen at nitrogen.io um, or go to the source code at ni- github.com slash nitrogenjs. Uh, we're definitely looking for pull requests. So okay. uh, you... <laughs> need to go check it out and uh let us know uh, what we need to do and also you know if you want to if you want to uh start submitting some code feel free um yeah so uh that's that's nitrogen in a nutshell that's awesome josh thanks a lot not a problem it's a pleasure <laughs>
technology is your friend until Skynet.